Welcome to Intro to AP Computer Science for New AP Teachers. This video is about arrays. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to learn here today. Uh, the topics, uh, what is an array? Again, hopefully, I assume you know this, but it's always good to review. We'll look at how to create an array in Java, especially for those of you coming from other languages. You might not be familiar with the way Java does things. Talk about accessing and modifying array elements, and it's done by index. Uh, the next topic is array traversal. This is, to me, this is one of the key core fundamental concepts in Java, uh, in at least in the AP. It comes up in the multiple choice questions. It comes up in the free response questions. So it's it's a really important topic. Um, I talk about it throughout the course. As, and if you've seen the other videos, I talked about it in the loops section. Talked about it with strings. Um, this is our first kind of real collection. Uh, a string is kind of a pseudo collection in a way, but in this case it's an actual collection of values, a collection of objects. Look a little bit at enhanced for loops, but we won't talk about those until uh, probably until later, I think. Uh, actually, no, we do talk about it here. And then algorithms, some just some different types of algorithms that students should probably be familiar with, certain things they should be able to do using arrays and array traversal, and a little bit of an introductory exercise to help you visualize this uh, process. So what is an array? Um, an array is an ordered data structure. The key here is ordered. Uh, arrays in Java hold one type of data. They can be primitive types or they can be reference types, meaning objects. And uh, you know, if you're coming from Python, for example, you know, lists are kind of similar to arrays. Uh, you can put an integer, you can put, you can put a, a string, you can put, you can mix you can, put, you can put arrays, you can do anything you want with a, a Java list, or excuse me, a Python list, but Java's a little bit stricter about that sort of thing. Uh, arrays are fixed in size. So once you've created the size of an array, so this array has 10 elements, it always has 10 elements. You can't add elements, you can't remove elements. Now you can set, if it's a reference type, you can set it to null, but there's still 10 places in memory reserved for that uh, array. Uh, but what is nice is it, it is randomly accessible through an index. So you, if you want to access element one or element 10 million, it doesn't matter. You can access it just as quickly. It's one of the strengths of arrays. So creating an array. So you'll see this pattern. Type, um, square brackets, name equals new, type, uh, and then the number of elements also in square brackets. So for example, int square bracket scores equals new int seven. So th this tells you this, that there are seven elements. In this case, each element is an integer and the default value would be zero. So as a reminder, just like with strings, the first element has an index of zero and the last element is index six. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, which gives us seven elements in total. As I mentioned, the default value for an array of integers is zero. So if you try to print out this, this, the values, uh, you would see all zeros at this point. Now we can also create arrays that are pre-populated with values. So for example, string brackets weekdays equals uh, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you can see here there are five elements. The indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in this case, you know, we knew up front what the values were going to be, and we set them. Now we could change those if we wanted to. You know, let's say we want to change the language or whatever. But uh, this is a way of pre-populating if we know the values in advance. So accessing and modifying array elements. So to access and modify an array element, you need the index. As I mentioned, 0 through it's going to be length minus one. So you would, if you're accessing, you see, say the value equals name square brackets index. If you're modifying, it's name index equals whatever that new value is that you want it to have. Now I use value here, but it could also be an object. I just chose value because typically with arrays, a lot of times you'll see, you know, integers and doubles and that sort of thing. But yeah, you also can use reference types. Array traversal. Now this is super duper important. Uh, this is what I talked about earlier in the strings unit and with the loops, uh, especially is this is that pattern I, I talk about with my students all the time. It comes up in the free response questions. It comes up basically everywhere. Um, so we've created uh, an array, same thing, seven elements. 
So for int i equals zero, so i in this case represents the index. Not as the i didn't come from that, it comes from an older programming language where i was an integer. And uh, so you might see, you'll see i, j, k used a lot of times. So we're starting at zero because indices start at zero. While i is less than scores dot length. Now notice it's the array name dot length. There are no parentheses here. Okay? With strings, it was length parentheses. But with arrays, it's length. Wait till we get to array list because they do their own thing. Uh, and then we in, uh, increment i plus plus. So here's that pattern. So here's our for loop. Then we pull out each individual score. So the first score equals scores i. And then we do something with that score. Okay, so this is that standard pattern that I, I've talked about before in these videos and I really emphasize with the students because uh, they have a lot of trouble with this and keeping consistent is important. Another thing I really emphasize with the students is this is an array. So I ask them to make sure the name of their arrays are plural uh, because it's, it's a group. And then when we pull one item out, it's singular. So score, scores, name, names. Uh, person, you can do persons or people, uh, so student, students. It just keeps a certain level of consistency and helps, especially for ESL students who I have quite a few because I teach at an international school. This is, this is a really helpful thing to keep that consistency. We can do the exact same thing with a while loop, although typically we use for loops. Um, you can use a while loop, but uh, I really just kind of go with for loops. I'm just more comfortable with them and I think they suit this, this pattern a bit more uh, naturally. So same thing, our, our, our counter here, our index is i equals zero. The, the condition is i is less than scores.length, no parentheses. Then in here, it's the same pattern. We pull out one score at a time and we do something with it. And then we increment. If you forget that, you get stuck in infinite loop. Oops, go back a little bit. We can also do uh, what's called an enhanced for loop. I talked about this earlier in the uh, in one of the earlier units, but this is the first case where we can really use it without uh, having to do something special. You know, in the previous case, we had to use the two char array uh, method. So the, for, the enhanced for loop is pretty cool. Um, so what it does is it skips that step where you have indices and pulling out the individual item and just does it for you. So for if you, you think about this, it's sometimes called a for each loop. So for each score in the array score, then we do something with it. So we print it. Now we would use this when we're definitely starting at the first element and going all the way to the end. If we wanted to go from the end to the beginning, we couldn't do that. We'd have to use a regular for loop or a while loop. So those are different ways we can traverse the arrays with a for loop, a while loop, or for each loop or enhanced for loop as they're called in Java. There are a number of standard algorithms the students should be familiar with. So these are the things that might come up on the uh, AP exam, either in a multiple choice type question or in a free response question. So the students should be comfortable finding maximum and minimum values from an array. So how do we find that value? They should be comfortable computing sums and computing averages. So this goes back to the loops, uh, basically the loop unit has a little bit of this as well. Determining if at least one element meets a certain criteria. So you have a group of students. Is, is there at least one senior in that group? How, could, how would you determine that? Uh, determining if all elements meet a certain criteria. So you have a group of students. Are they all seniors or are they not all seniors? How do we do that? Um, also, Counting, this is a big one. We did this earlier with counting vowels uh, in one of the earlier videos, or at least in my book we do that. Um, determining the number of elements that meet a criteria. So, you know, how many students are seniors? How many students are juniors? How many students are sophomores, etc., etc. Shifting array elements left or right. That's an interesting exercise. And if the students can understand that and they have a really solid grasp for the for the most part on looping and iterating and all that sort of thing. Um, that requires use of a temporary value because otherwise you'll lose one of the values. And then reversing the order of the elements, definitely make sure the students know how to do that in place. Uh, and also be careful with reference types because that can, you can have some issues with that. 
so and this does I have seen this on the AP exam at least AP form previous AP exams have had this so make sure the students know how to you know work through that and make sure that they can trace the code for that particular one um, interactive exercise um, again arrays are not a hard concept especially after doing uh, strings it's basically analogous to a string except instead of just each character uh, of the string where we have an object or, or a value primitive so what I do is usually just write a set of boxes on the board and then just ask the students to, for some values just some random numbers and then I give the students two slips of paper and I ask them to write down one axis so system out print ln and then whatever you know those values are you know it could be ARR uh, AR5 AR3 and then one modifier ARR6 or you know equals you know whatever value uh, and then we take those just randomly pull them out and then write either write them on the board or put them onto the screen somehow if you have a projector and then we just work through it okay so what you know how do we change the values of that array based on these particular commands and then, you know, I'll throw a couple in there too where I'll do like array 3 equals array 4 uh, just kind of see if they can get the idea okay well we can copy values uh, from one box to another box which is pretty cool so yeah you'll find that that way they get an idea of how that system works and it's a little bit visual a little bit more active yeah you know, I like getting the students up and writing stuff on the board and, and that sort of thing um, so yeah so we looked at what is an array how to create an array there's two different ways and it created basically an array with default values or pre-populated array. Saw how to access and modify the array elements. Um, array traversal with for loops and while loops. Array traversal with enhanced for loops. Some of the standard algorithms that students should be comfortable with. And hopefully a little introductory exercise to get you started. So good luck with that. See you soon.